Okay. Man, I should probably put some oil on this thing. Well, hello everyone. Hope you've had a, uh, a Merry Christmas and um, thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, seeing what we're gonna do today. Also wanted to kind of call out that we uh, we just recently crossed the, the 300, actually blasted through the 300 subscriber mark. So everyone who's subscribing, man, I really appreciate that. And obviously it'll, it'll continue to help the channel because the more subscribers we get and the more that y'all watch, the more widespread this all gets. And then uh, everything gets a little bit more successful. So uh, that's what we're trying to do here. And uh, and of course, I want everyone to learn a little bit about uh, how to do things and have a chance just to kind of sit down and chat with you a bit as I, I work through some of this stuff. So what are we doing today? Well, it's the usual. Uh, I have no plan. Um, I had, well, maybe I have a little bit of a plan. You know, we, we talked about that... Um, the replacement parts lantern that we got as the uh, that we're going to convert into a floor lamp so uh the the just to kind of recap what's going on with this one well i guess we can probably dispose of the price tag on here um the uh come on i probably should just cut this but oh well i guess i'm trying to do it the hard way but uh, anyway so this is the one that we picked up in um in Wimberley, and they were uh, they were selling it off, and um, they had a 50% off sale on their items in their store. So this one ended up being being 12 bucks, and uh, it's really great as a parts lantern. Now it does have some alignment issues to it. If you if you take a look along here, this isn't all exactly straight, so it's kind of been hit at one point or another. But the important thing here is that even though it's missing a burner tube, um, that I have a feeling that what's going on underneath here is in much, much better shape than what was going on with our other lantern back here. This is the one that kind of started all this, right? So here's the other one. And uh, if you remember correctly, something had gone wrong here at some point in the past and someone basically stuck a tube in there and soldered it and hoped for the best. And whereas that makes it functional as it is right now for doing what it's supposed to do, it will not be able to be converted into a table lamp just because this isn't straight and it needs to be so, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's kind of what we're gonna do. But when we look at this one, this one has got the, uh, the valve stem has been knocked off of this. Uh, also, the, uh, the packing nut is missing off of the, well, not valve stem, I'm sorry, the knob. The knob has been shattered. These were pressed, these are molded on, and once they're shattered and they're gone, you're kind of like, you, you're done. So, and then also the nuts been off of that. So the basic idea here is that we've got parts lanterns. Um, fount on this one looks a lot better than this one. This one's got a valve stem that I can swap over to this one. Hopefully when we take this off, we'll see that everything unscrews and I can put a extension piece of pipe on there. Uh, it's got a uh, an R55 generator in here. <coughs> Excuse me. That is, uh, is also kind of bent. You can probably see that here. Looks like it's taking a shot this way. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so what we're going to do today with this one, this one's getting set to the side because we're going to work on this. And uh, yeah, it's got like, uh, it, it just needs to be kind of cleaned up. But you can see on this one, the bottom one is a substantially better shape than the other. <coughs> okay, so first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to start turning it down just to kind of see what we got here. And then once we understand what's going on here, then we can figure out what our next plan of action is. So, you know, we may not be spending a whole heck of a lot of time with this one today, but you'll get a chance to kind of see what we're working on. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get this generator loose out of here. See, this is the thing that I like so much about the way Coleman designed their stuff. They designed this stuff to be all basically brass on brass, and it just never ceases. It just never does. Who knows how long this thing has been in here, and uh, it just comes off. Actually, this one, huh, this one might have been a steel one. This, I believe, is brass, but uh, at any rate, it came loose just fine. The generator is completely solidly frozen, so now I've got quite the collection of... of Useless generators. I tried to rebuild this one according to um, uh, William Clock's guide 
on the on the net, but I could not get the uh, the pricker rod to move. It just refuses to go. I mean, it's so so jam up inside there. This one does work. Um, I just probably would need to run a guitar string through it to kind of clean it out a little bit. But uh, since you can get the R55s, I have a I have a new replacement one that we'll be putting in here, which of course I showed to you guys before. But um, anyway, this is the uh, the new R55 that'll be that'll be going in, and uh, and it'll be good to go there. So uh, we're going to continue with the tear down here, and with that, we're going to remove this off the top of here. If it wants to behave, or I may just actually just take the whole assembly off with the, um, with this. See if we can get a good, good grip on this and take this off. feels like it's unscrewing from the fount, which is I'm totally fine with because that's the goal anyway. We can get these pieces apart later. Um, is it coming from the fount or not? Let's see. Now that it's loose enough. No, it's just the top. So that's fine. So we'll get this off of here. And this probably won't even be used. This will just be spare parts because uh, I have the whole other burner head assembly from the other one. So we'll get that off of there. And let's see if we can use proper tools instead of uh, nut destroyers. So we'll get this off of here. truth there we go that's exactly what you want to see so um it's just uh it's just screwed in there so uh that's great uh that looks good i don't think i'm going to um go any further than that with this um because it looks pretty good looks pretty solid in there uh i just need to get a uh an npt uh, eighth inch NPT pipe, which I can extend. And then uh, a, an outer um, handle for it. And I've been told that you can use the um, an antenna mast that they sell. There's like a chrome antenna mast or something like that that you can use that uh, cut to fit. So um, that's kind of what we got there. So now I know that I can go ahead and proceed with this. That'll be nice and straight. This will fit right back on there. That long tube will fit on there. We'll get a union for these two and I'll have to figure out a, a length on it. Ah, wow, that is painful. Um, so I think what I wanna kinda do here is uh, take a look at this uh, filler. That's right, I wasn't able to get it off there because it was, it was definitely quite on there and I don't wanna, hmm, let's see. How big do we go here? Not big enough. I really want to use a socket on this because this is a, a softer metal and I don't want to, uh, I really don't want to munge it up any. So let's let's just tr cautiously try a little bit. See the, uh, yeah, the, you can feel the flats are kind of rounded on this. Somebody really put some, some chutzpah in this. So, um, and even the, um, <clears throat> for the filler here, uh, where you, you pump the air pump in. Huh, I'm looking at this now, it does have a little bit of a lean to it. Looks like someone has whacked the heck out of this at some time in the past. I may just end up replacing the entire pipe, but uh, hmm, I'll have to think about that if I wanna go that route or not. I really would rather not unscrew anything from the fountain if I don't have to, and it's probably close enough, but yeah, it definitely is not that is not straight. That's got quite the S curve to it. So, uh, so yeah, it's 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 had some uh, excitement in the past. So let me go ahead and uh, kind of start seeing what I can do here. I want to get the um, 
this uh, little valve unscrewed out of here so I can put a socket on it and we'll see if we can get the sockets to fit. But first I want to do this so I don't, I don't mar anything. I'm using like the bottom part of the jaws because they're rounded for round objects, obviously. And um, yeah, that comes loose actually very easily, so that's great. So we'll just fully unscrew that, get it out of the way. It looks to be pretty plugged up. You know, we get mud daubers here and they try to put mud in everything. So um, yeah, that's pretty messed up, but that's all right. We'll, uh, we'll set it in the <coughs> ultrasonic here, even just to kind of just get it wet for the moment. And now we're gonna go find some sockets. I have no idea what size is gonna fit. I'm trying three quarter because that just seems like a, a logical number that someone would use and of course that's not it. Um, I'll just keep Oh, that's too small. That's, of course, three quarters, so I need a little bigger than that. Let's see what else we've got. Uh -huh. So we've got, got a couple of good size choices here. Probably some that are too big. Probably some that are, <laughs> probably most of them that are too small, but we'll just go ahead and grab these here and see what I end up with. So, yeah, this one obviously way too big. This one probably, yeah, too big. No, not good. Too small. Sort of, but not really. Mm. Okay, so. This was the closest, but boy, that's a lot of slop in there. It's a 13 16 and that one just way too big at uh, 7 eighths. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't see any really good flaps on here. Maybe these are. Yeah, these feel pretty good. Let's see if I can. Nope. That's just trying to round. <coughs> Now I know that these have got a, uh, a lead washer in them. I'm kind of wondering if I, maybe if I give a little tap. If that'll help loosen things up a little bit. No. No, it's just trying to, trying to slide. Hmm. Let me see what else I possibly have. <clears throat> I've got I've got a lot of three quarter inch sockets, which are all just a little bit too small. Um, this is a twenty five millimeter, so that's probably also nothing that's going to help us. But hey. Any port in a storm, I think that's too big. Yeah, it's way too big. Well, now, a bit of an impasse. So what we can do, um, yeah, you know what? We can try this. We can try putting a little bit of paper on there. So if anything does slip, it's not going to mar it up too much. I'm hoping. Uh, yeah, just not going to work. So <clears throat> we're going to... We're going to take the vice grip garage approach and put some vice grips to it, which probably is making everyone cringe a little bit, but we'll see what happens. It's on there pretty tight. The, uh, the little filler valve was not, but this is, this is on there pretty tight, so boy, it does not want to move. Kept progressively putting a little bit more squeeze on it. Ah, there she goes. All right. Wow. 
man, look at that mating surface. Look how <laughs> it's, it is like, that looks really good. No pitting, almost perfectly polished. And then of course, this is the, uh, the lead gasket, which you can't really tell is there. It just looks like gray metal with some brass rubbed on it. But um, yeah, so that's good. We got that loose and uh, shouldn't need to be tightened down anywhere near so tight. So, uh, but if these things do, sorry about the squeaks. If these do fail on you and you can't get them to seal right, you can always use the same rubber cap gasket from a uh, from the three-piece cap and they will fit right in there and it will seal. So uh, you can always use that, but the lead one will never go old. Um, there's some people who said they've, they've uh, reflowed them before, uh, basically heated up until the lead melts and let it cool and they've had some success with that. The uh, check valve is moving. Yep, it definitely, yeah, it's working. So that part's great. So, um, yeah, so we're gonna basically probably close this down here. Uh, not a whole lot of progress made, but we we got a whole lot more knowledge than we started in with. Um, I guess the, uh, well, let, you know what? Let's do one quick test while we're while we're here. Let's um, let's try and see how well this. Uh, this fount wants to uh, wants to shine up, and um, we'll just kind of pick a spot here, and uh, away we go. So, uh, yeah, this one's got, I think, pretty good, um, pretty good looking nickel on here. As I sit here and try to remember my words, <laughs> but we'll give this a little bit of a quick polish so we can kind of see what we're dealing with because this is going to be the uh, this is going to be the fount that we're going to end up using and uh, just because there's nowhere near as much damage to the the bottom of the fount and certainly nowhere near as much uh, uh, flaked off metal bouncing around inside as it was um, with the other one so uh, for those of you who are uninitiated to the fount polishing procedure what we're using here is uh, quadruple ot steel wool which is this so four zeros the ultra fine or whatever i don't know whatever they call it fine finish super fine and mother's mag and aluminum polish and you basically get a little bit on the uh, on the steel wool and then you just kind of pick a spot and go for it so that's kind of what we're doing here that's probably way plenty that I've rubbed on here already. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, use this very dirty rag and uh, polish that off and see what we end up with underneath here. The, uh, the more that you buff on it, obviously, the better it looks. And um, I probably should use this microfiber here because it's actually a little cleaner. So we'll clean it with that. So with that little bit of uh, effort, you go from very dull and lifeless here to uh, something that looks pretty darn shiny. Uh, not too bad. So uh, I think this one's going to polish up really nice. And um, we will uh, continue on from there. Same thing we'll do with this is uh, same kind of thing. Probably throw this in the ultrasonic just to kind of knock some of the, the gross dirt off of it and then polish it up too. And then it'll all go on there. And then, before you know it, we'll uh, we'll have ourselves a uh, a floor lamp. I think I probably called it a table lamp lamp before, but it's a floor lamp is what we're aiming for, right? So this one will sit on the floor. These have wide enough bases that they're they're really pretty stable. And then uh, you know we'll put the uh, the floor lamp uh, extension on here, and then the burner head. We'll get our shade on there, and then we'll have a uh, a nice. Uh, full-size floor lamp that uh, that Coleman never made but uh, we will so uh, that's kind of the uh, the deal here um, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a good success I think we'll we'll think we'll just try to work it with this oh man I don't know I may have to I may have to pull that out because boy I tell you that is that is so far well let's take a look at this let's see how how off-center it is when I put this lined up in it I mean, they, let me pop this out. Yeah, so you can kind of see 
here that it, it is a bit off center. Although they did try to get it angled back, but it does definitely have this kind of an S shape to it. So that is it for this episode here. Um, we're going to go on another pick and trip. So uh, keep an eye out for the next video. We'll, uh, we'll show some video of what we're doing out there on the pick and trip. And uh, this is going to be one of the big ones. This is going to be Canton, probably the, the biggest uh, antique show in Texas. And uh, we're just going to see how it goes with, the, uh, with the, the time of year being, you know, in December and everything else like that. We'll see how, um, how everyone shows up and maybe we'll find some good stuff. Maybe we won't. Who knows? But uh, until next time. Keep them lit.